I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, DIY-HA.com, and today I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of some code that I published on DIY-HA.com, um, showing you how to basically scrape your real-time electrical usage from an undocumented API provided by Bidgely. Now, Bidgely is a service where um, basically you buy a little widget and you put it in your house and plug it into your router. And um, if your utility provides you with a smart meter, Bidgely is basically able to grab your real-time uh, energy usage about once per minute, ping it to their server through your home network, and then you can log on to a web interface and get at that usage data. Um, but for home automation people like us, we don't want to just be able to see that through some kind of dashboard that Bidgely builds, and they actually have a, a very pretty dashboard, but still, we'd like to get at the data itself. Now, Bidgely is pretty new. They don't really have an API that you can officially go in and use, so I decided I would write one for them. And uh, that's where this Python code comes in. And you can get this code on our site, again, diy-ha.com. So the first thing we're doing here is importing the Mechanize module from Python. And this module basically lets you create a browser in your Python code um, and then direct it to go and do things. Um, we're going to bring in the JSON module as well, because what we're going to get back from this undocumented Bidgely API is some JSON. Now here, this is pretty important. Um, before you begin using the code, you have to go and enter your own user ID and Bidgely email and password. So these two are pretty straightforward. If you're using Bidgely, just put in your credentials. The user ID is a little trickier, though. Um, all you're going to have to do, though, is go to your Bidgely dashboard, so when you first log in, and go to view source. And this is all written out actually in the code comments. And then just do a control F in your browser and search for UUID. Um, and you're going to get a sequence of letters and numbers. I think it's probably about 20 uh, separated by dashes. And you're just going to copy that from the source code for that dashboard and stick it in here as your user ID. And I'm not going to put it, uh, it into the code here right now because it's personal to my account. Um, but you put that information in, and your username and password as strings in here, and you'd be good to go. So here at line 15, we're going to create the actual browser that we're going to use to go and access information from Bidgely. So we're just going to create a new instance of a browser from that mechanized module. Then we're going to do some configuration steps on the browser. First, we're going to set it to handle redirects, um, which is really important. So when we go to actually visit a URL, if there is a redirect, it'll follow it. And I believe Bidgely does use them, so you want to have that ready to go. And then we're going to change the user agent header. Um, and the reason for this, we're not trying to trick anybody or anything like that. It's just that I found with the Bidgely API, it wants to see a standard user, user agent coming in there. Um, and it formats things differently by different user agents, I believe. So we're just going to basically um, use the same user agent we would have if we were using a Mozilla browser. And the next step is we're going to direct our mechanized browser to go and open the Bidgely login page. So this is just the open command in mechanize, and we're going to give it the URL for the login. And now that we're on that page, or our virtual browser has gone there, we're going to select the first form on the page. So we're saying select form, the mechanized command, nr equals 0, so the 0th form, which is the first one on the page. And when that form is selected, we're now going to find the control where you're going to enter um, your username. And on Bitchly, that's labeled as text, as the type. So we're going to go in and find that. Um, there's only one text uh, field in there, so that's going to be our username in that form. And we're just going to set that control value to our username from up here. Then we're going to do the same thing with password. And again, we're going to find the, the one password control in that form. And we're going to enter in our password. Then we're just going to send the submit command. And that's going to submit the form. And now our virtual browser is actually going to be logged into Bidgely, as if you had just gone to your Bidgely dashboard. But from here, this is where we're going to start finding that undocumented API. And this is actually the API that the Ajax calls in that Bidgely dashboard are hitting in order to get uh, information to display in that dashboard. So we're going to basically use our browser to hit that same API. Uh, and again, it's really simple. It's just going to be this um, URL string. 
And if you actually were to pull up developer tools or something like that in your browser, you could watch the Bidgely dashboard make the same kinds of calls to this URL. And that's how I originally found it. Um, the one thing we are going to do here is using string substitution here, we're just going to put in our user ID, which again we put in up here. And that's going to create the uh, URL that's custom to your particular dashboard. And we're just going to hit that URL. And the way we're going to do that is um, just with this open command. And then we're going to read back the HTML response. And in this case, it's actually not HTML, it is JSON. And you can see when I run, this, when I run the code down here at a later point in time, we're going to be able to actually see that um, information come up. But I'm going to um, pull that in. And now this HTML variable is going to contain, obviously, that JSON. Uh, now I'm going to load it in using Python's JSON module so I can go through it and treat it like a Python object. So I'm going to do json.loads and I'm going to pull in that HTML and that's going to give me my usage data. And I'm just going to print that out for debugging purposes. You can see what I get down here is uh, that string. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and iterate through that object until I find the value here which is going to be my value for uh, the current electrical usage in watts. So I'm going to read that into the current usage variable. And then finally, I'm just going to print out that information with a nice formatted string. So um, I'm going to run this now with my own information. I've scrolled down so you can't see my password, obviously. I'm going to run this. And you can see what I get out of here is my current usage in watts. And I could do a lot of things with that now. I mean, obviously, I'm just printing it out to the console. But what I do is actually stick it into a MySQL database. And then my other elements of my home automation system can go in and access that. So I'm currently using it to actually light up a little ambient orb kind of indicator um, in my house that tells me what my usage is like by changing color. Uh, I could also pull this in and have it automatically switch the lights off um, if I was us using too much power. Uh, a lot of, lot of opportunities. And again, that's what's really exciting, I think, to home automation people. We want to get at that data. Uh, we want to use it for our own systems. We want to build logic around it. And um, that's what this code allows you to do using your Bitchly.